so, this week's, uh, I'm getting it off Facebook. So this week we're going to talk about tension lines. I know we spoke previously, we said we are going to look at guy and model pods, but we had a lot of feedback about one of our posts in regards to tension lines. So we're going to look at tension lines and spanned anchors. Kind of the same name, slightly rigged different for two different things. And uh, we've got some background help here. Obviously everybody's trying to stay as far away, or as far apart from each other as possible. So bear with us. The other thing is we're going to have to do some notional stuff. We can't go to a park right now and rig in a forest without getting ourselves into trouble. So what we're going to start with first is what's kind of known as the British Columbia Search and Rescue Spanned Anchor. It's the one that's in the PEP, SAR, Provincial Emergency Program, Search and Rescue Program, um, Rope Rescue Book. And bear with me, assume this is a tree. Assume this is a big tree, bomb-proof anchor. Yes, it's a bolt hanger into a double carabiner right now. But once again, we're trying to stay indoors, stay away from people, what have you. What we've got on this end is a bowling. We're using both strands of rope. So it is a two rope system on here. Bowling going around, tied off with your overhand knot on the leg. So this is one side of the anchor. Now we'll span over and we'll look at the other side of the anchor. We'll talk about the middle in a second. So you've got your two ropes moving the entire way through the system. Now, you're going to want this to multiple anchors. Once again, a bomb proof anchor like a big tree. There's a lot of differences out there about how big a tree should be. If you're really interested in that, go take a look. Some guys from um, one of the SAR teams in the Pacific Northwest did some uh, studies on wind and tree anchors and how strong they are. You can find it on the Eiders website. I'm not going to get into it here. But needless to say, this is resemblant of our other tree. And what we have here is a round turn on the tree. This is also the nice part. We can turn our tree. A round turn, and then it's tied off with two half hitches. This could be doubled. You could use both the ropes. We've chose to do it singly here, so each rope is sort of independently tied, although with doubles it's really six of one half dozen of the other. So this is a search and rescue anchor, it's tied around trees, and now we'll move back to the middle, trying to stay far enough apart. And this, we got a lot of comments on online about what these prussics are. These prussics are designed not to catch, this is not a tandem prussic belay. What this is for is to be able to move these anchors and have some ability to keep them in a focal point or a fall line when we move them. We simply done a triple wrap and then made them into a basket. The big thing about the BC Search and Rescue uh, span anchor is they want it to be 140 degrees. That's slightly difficult to tell and we're going to play with some of the other anchors here just to take a look and you know why this is not necessarily a hundred percent but for to make the bc search and rescue standard we want 140 degrees so if we had the 180 degree line between our two anchor points that inside angle maximum is 140. so with this we I mean, generally just bring it a little more slack that's all you have to do with this I'm also going to say as we move to the other one, if you have any questions, throw them up on Facebook, throw them up on Instagram, and as the guys are looking at this and filming it, they'll call out the questions if any come up. So at any point through, just let us know, and we'll move on to the next one and see if you have any questions. So I'm just going to jump over this. This is another type of stand anchor. And as you can see, we've got a load cell on this one, and we're going to be taking a look at a little bit of forces with this. This one here was taught to us by Belgian military. It is the Belgian military's version of a span anchor. And what they have on this side is a clove hitch. Once again, assume this is a tree. These are more wilderness style anchors. We'll get into the industrial anchor next. Clove hitch, tied off as I call it Euro style because it's the first place I saw it, although I do know people in North America do use this tie off. And what I'm talking about with this tie off is this knot back around 
like a lot of people do in North America. North America, a lot of people will pass this through and bring this back around and tie it off. First time I saw this was in Europe where they just run the overhand, line my fingers on this side. And because this is the dead end of the system, we just added in that catastrophe piece to it. So this is one side of the anchor. We tightened it up somewhere between a half to a KN. So 0 0.5 to 1 KN is the tension we did on this. We didn't use a 3 to 1. We simply just used the clove hitch on the other side and tightened it down. Moving to the middle, they run two alpine butterflies in the middle. So, pros and cons. Obviously, the pro is you've got two fixed anchors. The con is you've got two fixed anchors. You can't move it like you can with the other one, but with this here, they are fixed. Moving down to the bottom end here, once again, a clove hitch. And we've got it muled off. Anybody that's used to mountain guide terminology, it's a half hitch followed by an overhand. And that's just the tail of our rope. And this is termed as muled. So we've muled off the knot. Once again, it's a clove hitch on this side. We'll come up here, the board in the background. With the spanned anchor and the clove hitch. We'll start with the clove hitches. We've done some testing on this previously. 4-inch Bullard KM3 11mm rope tying the clove hitch, both the North American, that's the wrap around it, and the European, which is the wrap forward, and I get it, that's not the technical names. We got less than 3 kilonewtons or 10% difference between the breaking strength of those two anchors, and that's a full pull on a 4-inch Bullard. That basically breaks down to statistical error. The North American anchor slipped around 5,700, 6,000 foot pounds, 26, 27 KN. The Euro style anchor didn't slip as much as the North American. The North American had a distinct slip on the graph where you could see that it readjusted itself. Broke at full strength basically. The Euro was 33 KN, the North American was 36 KN. What this tells us, don't take this, write it down. We need more testing on this. That's what this tells us. When we looked at this spanned anchor, because obviously everybody's looking at the same as us going, wow, we've already tightened it down to a half a kilonewton over there. You know, this is dangerous sort of thing. We could really get some serious problems going. We pulled this six times uh, a couple years ago at CMC. With 3.4 kilonewtons in, we ended up with 3.03 .03 kilonewtons on each anchor. So even tightening it down, we ended up with less than 120 degrees on it. And we're going to do that here today just to have some looks at this and see what it looks like. So we'll back up over to here. We'll clip the rope in. We've got our lovely assistant Damien down there. Dan of White. Missing his hockey hair. Ken, if you want to go over to that uh, load cell there. What are we reading on that load cell? We are 1.38. 1.38 KN. David, what are we on that load cell? Right now we're at 0.48. 0.48, okay. Let's load it up to 1 KN. Let's stop there. What are we at? We are settling in. There he is. Your crust is Coming back down. What are you at? 0.86. 0.88. And over here, we are at 2.48. So we're definitely getting some growth on this. With a 0.8 input, we're getting 2.4 at the anchor. Now, something to think about with this, and it's kind of, you know, how we've rigged this right now. This is twin lines here. We're putting 0.8 in on two ropes. So each rope is theoretically, on this one, the way we grabbed it, but each rope here is theoretically only seeing half of that input. So when we go to this anchor, yes, we're into a single point here, which is why we stopped, because I don't feel like eating this bolt hanger. But this 2.48 would generally be slung over two ropes, which means each rope is only seeing about 1.25 kN of strength. 
So 0.8 in, going over our two ropes is only giving us about 1.2 on each side. That makes sense to everybody? Damien, if you want to release that. And give us two sacks, folks, and we're just going to show the next one. Get you to DC this, and we'll get over here. Okay, last but not least, we're looking at tension lines. And this is more of the rope access, the industrial rescue. Uh, what you saw on our Facebook post the other day when we were doing the drops on that building for the envelope inspections. On the one hand, we've just gone to knots. Um, we've never had an issue. We've rigged like this for years. Never had an issue with just going to knots instead of having something like a prussic bypass. And I'll explain why in a second. As we move down, you guys are good. Or Once again, we're back to the same setup as before. We've got our prussic wrap into a basket in order to allow us to move these wherever we need. We found these useful both in the tactical environment when we're teaching uh, military police teams or in the rope access environment. So I gotta do a drop here, I gotta do a drop here. This will simply just move. As you're rigging your main your safety or your twin tension system directly to these lines. These are not a change of direction, these are a direct rigging point. Why we can get away with this? We'll get you guys to stop there. So Damien's going to tighten this down. We use a three to one to tighten these, and we're generally all right with this. Now Damien's going to tie off a catastrophe knot, and then he's going to back out, and I'm going to move in. He can leave that to So we've tied it off a couple of different ways. We'll talk about why in a second. This one's linked right into an anchor. This one's got a slip knot on it. What we're looking at with this setup is putting these through devices that slip. And this is the key to the tension line. Why we don't mind running just an eight on one side, why we don't mind putting a three to one in here. These devices here are uh, both rigs. On this rope, we're gonna get somewhere around a seven to eight kilonewton slip. You need to test these devices with your own rope. Petzl gives different numbers. A lot of the time, Petzl tests the devices with their ropes, which means they get different numbers. This isn't Petzl rope. It's prudent that you go out and test your stuff on your own so you know your own numbers. We know what this slips at. So if I put enough force into here, and I eventually get six, eight kilonewtons at my anchor. Now think about this, this is two lines. So I'm going to have to put in, say, 12 kilonewtons of force split over these two lines to get six up here. So think about the input force that's required at this point. Now, these devices will slip. So I do reach that. I do have that catastrophe. I do have that fall into the line. I screwed something up. These devices slip. And at six to eight kilonewtons, seven to eight with this, with this particular rope, they'll start to slip out. And obviously I'm not going to put that kind of force in here. And as they slip, this is why we have that safety knot or that catastrophe knot. The first thing it does is when these slip, it obviously increases the angle, or decreases, beg my pardon, from, you know, say 140 down to 120, 100, which does relieve the tension and the force that's on each anchor at this point. We keep the knot in here so we don't end up with inertial runaway. Inertial runaway is basically we cause the device to slip and the device cannot re-catch itself. So um, some devices have that problem where they'll slip and they won't stop slipping. We obviously don't want that. That creates a whole other problem for us. So we put a catastrophe knot or a catch knot into the rope. It could be something like this or it can be something like this. We got this from Rich Delaney great idea and at this point here if we have to re-deal with it if I've got to lower it out more all I do is I simply pull that knot out and I have the ability to utilize this rope whether that be to tension it back up to lower it out whatever the case may be and then I want to put my knot back into it in order to make sure that works so that's span anchors and tension lines 15 minutes we're trying to go fast and furious with this Go try it at home. Grab some load cells, 
pull stuff, see what it does for you, figure out what your ropes slip at in your devices in order to get you know, accurate numbers with this. Any questions pop up on those things? My one question came up about using presses as you're slipping uh, clutch instead of a device. Jump on in. I'll walk <laughs> out deep and jump in. So I think a question came up in terms of uh, if that end is how it tied over there, can we use press six here? Uh, kind of dates back to the old Kootenai Highline system uh, using that uh, theory. Uh, it's probably something you can do. Uh, you get a lot less reliability and predictability with press six. Uh, so it's something we tend not to do. Uh, we get a lot more uh, precise slipping if we figure out what our ropes do in our devices. We can rely on that a lot more and they'll slip at much lower forces than your typical uh, single press like triple wrap. So that's why we don't take these presses much. Yeah, there was a question on there about that. Thanks, Damien. Yep. Um, the other point of that as we swap in and out is the BC Search and Rescue Span Anchor, that's rigged that way. And it's rigged that way because there's, I don't know, a thousand volunteer search and rescuers in the province. And it's like the fire department when guys join there. There's better ways to do stuff than the way I do it in my fire department. But when we're training a few hundred people, we've got to pick a way and go. So we, as Damien answered the Prussic question there, but that's why in some of these, they're rigged a certain way. Any other questions jump up on there? Um, what device is on the wall? Um, pencil ring. So, are these both new ones? Yeah. Both new style rigs with the, no, nope, both old. Um, and that's what we're running on the wall there. Once again, these would be two, a bomb proof anchor. Um, if you're using bolt hangers, grab a couple of them. This is just demonstration purposes only. We wouldn't be linking carabiners to carabiners. We're just doing that in order to get certain orientations for shots here. Was there any other questions that came up? Um. Good. All right. Thanks okay. a lot. We will see you next Monday. And that's where we're going to start looking at guying um, monopods into eventually into guying bipods and then eventually putting an English reeve in between the two of them. Thanks a lot for joining in. Stay safe out there.